As many of you know, at the end of January, I had the opportunity, along with uh, six others from Harbor, to go to Guinea, West Africa, and there be involved in training pastors and sort of representing us all there. And so what I wanted to do this morning is just give a brief update on that time there, and I've got three little uh, videos that we'll show. And we really did feel God's favor with us as we went. And uh, one of the reasons for that, my number one reason, is because so many of you were praying for us and thinking of us. And so thank you for those prayers. They really did uh, hold us up. But I think the second reason that we really felt God's favor with us is, if you've been around Harbor for a while, you know we have this simple pathway and, and a vision and some tools that we sort of train and use. And all the team were people that knew those tools and were, were using them. And so as, as we went, we got to go as practitioners, not teaching something we're not doing, but teaching something we're using here every day. And God just so favored that as we walked with the pastors. And Liam now will just give us one specific segment of how that worked itself out. So one of the moments from our time in Guinea that sticks out to me the most was the third day of the conference. Uh, we spoke about the harvest and we looked at Luke 10 together and we trained one another in the three circles. And then we said, we're all going to go out in the harvest right now. And I don't know how many of us there were. We didn't count, but there must have been almost 70 of us. We prayed and we went out in the harvest. And for most of those pastors, it was their first time ever doing this. They were so excited that they could share the gospel and people would listen. My partner and I, we shared the gospel six times in an hour. And one story that sticks with us, the pastor from Ivory Coast, he shared with these two women. And it turns out that these two women were Muslim and they had actually been connected with the church in Koya before, but they hadn't trusted Christ yet. And later that week, they actually came to the church to visit with the pastor and some of the people. And after that day, and now coming home, uh, I was reminded, reminded again as to why we go in the harvest, and I have more of a heart now to continue to go and to continue to invite others to come out in the harvest. As we were getting ready to go out, I admit that was an intimidating moment. I've gone out and talked to strangers for the last four years around here, but going out in Guinea, so much is different, right? Different continent, different racial group, different economic background, different religious background, different climate, everything was so different. But as we went out, here's what we saw, that the gospel, proclamation of the gospel was exactly the same. And we saw God work uh, there in Guinea the same way he works here in Canada. And those two sisters that Liam talked about, I actually got to meet both of them. One sister was much closer to Christianity, and she came to the church the next day. And Wilmot had me sit with her and share the gospel with her. And I asked her, I said, so are you a believer in Jesus? And she said, no. And I said, why not? And she said, because of my other sister, if I became a Christian, she would disown me. She would never speak to me again, and it's just too high of a cost for me to ever follow Jesus. And so I got to say two things to her. One is I got to say this, Jesus is worth it. He's worth it to give up everything, to follow him. He's worth it. But then the second thing I got to say is maybe Jesus would use you following him to impact your sister's life. And to that, she said to me, she said, well, it's impossible my sister would never be interested in Christianity. And that's how we finished the conversation. Then the next day, Wilmot came to me and he said, the sister's here at the church. And I said, the sister from yesterday? He said, no, the other sister. I was like, you mean the impossible one? He was like, yes, that one. I said, wow, that was quick, wasn't it? <laughs> so that sister had come. And two days earlier, the pastor who had prayed for her, she came to say thank you to that pastor. Because she said, everything he prayed for for me God has answered in the last two days. And so we were <laughs> Amen. just rejoicing of how God began to use that work in her life to open her and her sister's heart to the gospel. And that story is representative of what we found as we went out in Guinea, a country 90% Muslim, but yet such openness to the gospel, such a heart to hear the truth of the word of God. Truly, the harvest was plentiful there. And so overall, our time, five days spent training pastors, and Andrew will now give a little bit of reflection on some of the fruitfulness, some of what came out of that experience. One of the most encouraging things uh, that sticks out to me from the conference was the number of pastors who would come to us just between sessions and tell us how eager they are to go back to their own villages and their own countries uh, and train other people with these tools. And one specific example of this was one of the pastors named Peter from Sierra Leone. 
As soon as he got back, he sent us photos of him training three people from his church with the three circles. Really just seeing his heart stirred up to want to be uh, training others in these tools. Next week, actually, he's running a training conference in Sierra Leone. So Wilmot will be joining Peter in Sierra Leone for that. And then Wilmot is actually going um, back to the forest region in March to run a training conference there. Then recently he was with an unreached people group far away from Conakry and they had 15 converts who came to Christ. This is a Muslim group. Wilmot plans to go to those people again in April to also train them. And then lastly, he also plans to be doing a quarterly training in Conakry uh, for these same sort of tools. So just overall really encouraging seeing how people really grasp these tools and they have a desire to make the gospel known throughout uh, their country and throughout West Africa. And this is really an answer to prayer. So really great overall. Just incredibly humbled by these stories. Peter, who he mentioned from Sierra Leone, he leaves church on Sunday afternoon, takes a six, seven hour bus ride home. He gets home in the evening and he's already out in a village sharing the three circles with people. And the next morning he gathered the church and you saw the picture of the men he was training. And what so humbled us, but so encouraged us, but as, as we just went and said, here's God's heart, heart for all of us to go and make disciples, and we lay out a, clim a simple pathway and teach some simple tools, what happens is the same thing that's happened to me here and, and many of us. When you see God's vision, when you see a pathway, when you learn simple tools, it's like now I can do what my heart desired to do all along, and I just put these tools into action. So, Harbor, we are blessed to see how these pastors, in their humble way, just take these things and run with them. And so please be praying for them. We're excited to go back next year and see the breadth and the spread of all that's happened as this training has repeated itself out over that whole region there in West Africa. So that's the training time. One other video that Sporta speaks for itself, but it, it, I think it's probably one of the most important things we did while we were in Guinea. So know that people in our church went to stores and bought these gifts with love for you and for each of the kids and with prayers and with our hope to encourage you in the ministry you're doing here. Thought it'd be fun to play a game, musical chairs. <laughs> okay. To have a fellowship for such a love, for a giving gift to my family and myself, we want to say thank you and may the Lord bless you. Thank you so much. We are very grateful. So that was a Share the Joy Christmas in January in Guinea. We, on behalf of uh, Harbor, got to take the gifts that were given for Share the Joy. And uh, we did that little musical chairs game. If you got to sit in the white chair, you got your gift. First time around, they didn't really understand it. But after the first guy got his gift, then everybody understood what that white chair meant. Uh, such a great day we spent with the family. We took them out to eat at a restaurant. We gave the gifts. We played with the toys after on Christmas morning. And we were surprised by the gifts as well. And so we, they were sort of surprised how come we didn't know the gifts. And we said, well, because they were from the church. You know, we didn't purchase themselves as a team. So it was such a wonderful, wonderful moment to encourage and bless them. When we were driving home that night, Wilmot said to me, he said, thank you, Jeff. No one has ever done anything like that for my family before. And so Guinea is a hard place to minister. And what we did as a church was we just encouraged them, infused a little more hope and a little more energy to say, we're with you, we're behind you. And if you read this week in Harbor Happenings, or I think it was on Facebook as well, we got a same sort of update from Quentin, his wife, Thelina, how we sent them uh, some gifts in Quebec and how they were so blessed and so encouraged. And Harbor, that's much of our ministry. These are hard places to do ministry. And what we do is come along and pray and encourage and say, we are standing with you in the work that you're doing. So in a moment, I just want to pray for Wilmot on behalf of all of us in the work there in Guinea. Let me just give two other dates. One is next Sunday afternoon, 4 o'clock, if you want to hear more of the stories. And there's a lot of funny ones. There's some heartbreaking ones. 
and also just stories of God at work. Four o'clock, we'll be back here at Harbor. The whole team will be here to share some of your experiences. Everyone is invited to that time. And then if you're interested in the training, what, are, what is this vision that God has for us? What is the pathway? What are some of the tools? We're reproducing the same training again here at Harbor. I think it's May 4th, 5th, and 6th, uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And anyone is welcome to come to that time and get the overview of the entire training. But let me just take a moment and pray for Wilmot. Let me invite you to stand as we would uh, pray together. God, we thank you, Lord. We're humbled. The simple things that you are teaching us here as a church, Lord, for the opportunities to reproduce those in other places. And so, God, we pray for, we pray for Wilmot, for his wife, for their children. God, we pray you would strengthen and encourage them. God, we pray you'd continue to raise them up Lord, to lead so that we might see a plentiful harvest in Guinea. And God, we mark, Lord, the harvest is indeed so plentiful there, but the laborers are so few. And so, God, may you raise up many more who would be co-laborers there to see the gospel shared, disciples made, and churches started. And so, God, we thank you, Lord. We rejoice in the opportunity we have to be a part of this work. And we pray this all in the name of Christ. Amen.